So in this week's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made one of these ladder shelves. This particular one is going in a bathroom, and it had very specific width, height, and depth dimensions. So I will follow those in the video. But the way I made this, I could sh uh, is you can change the way I, I uh, built this in order to fit your particular needs. So it was a pretty simple build. It's only going to be one video. This is actually going to the exact same customer that is getting the long desk with the filing cabinet. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to eventually update the thumbnail on this so you don't have this weird view of it in my shop. This entire thing was solid oak and the customer provided me with enough oak to make the shelves. So all I really had to worry about um, Preparing and, and for this, the only stock I had to worry about preparing was the sides, essentially. So like I said, a very quick build, a very quick video, but these are pretty popular, so this is kind of how I uh, built it. So I had a piece of oak um, laying around that I could use for this. It was in pretty good shape. There wasn't a bunch of cupping or huge twists in it but the edges needed to be jointed. So instead of doing it on my table saw with my jointing jig, I just use a jointing plane. Um, there was really only a couple high spots, so I went through with a couple passes with the plane and got it square enough that it was safe to cut on my table saw. Like I said, there wasn't a ton of cups or twists in it, so I decided to rip it down to size before sending it through my planer. You can kind of see as I'm jointing it, it's taking away those high spots. And um, leaving the low spots until you see that the plane is taking a nice clean shaving is, is when it's going to be finished. So like I said, now I can send it through on my table saw and I'm cutting this into, I believe it was three and a half inch sections. The dimensions were kind of based on the fact that the customer had sent me a photo of one they had found that was using three and a half inch sections that were three quarter inch thick. And also this was the one piece of oak I had. So I was able to get three pieces out of it because I didn't know if I was going to have enough to do the shelves. So the third piece was potentially going to be used for the shelves and the other two for the legs. Once I had them ripped down to size, I could send them through my planer. Now I have a jig used to, to plane this because I, I, like I said, I don't have a jointer. So you're supposed to joint one edge of this so it's flat and then send it through the planer. And I have a jig that will do this, but sometimes you can get by with just sending them through the planer. And on a piece like this where if the sides had some higher low spots, it wasn't really going to ruin it. So that's what I decided to do. So then I have an interesting situation in my shop where I could put this on the ledge and get the angles I needed. But if you don't have a ledge like that, you could just prop it up to where you wanted, use a shim like a two by four, and use that to mark out where to cut the angles. So by doing this, then when you put it, it will be flush against the wall. But like I said, I have this weird ledge in my shop and it needed to be exactly, couldn't be any more than 13 inches off the wall. So I can make a mark and then um, cut where my angles are going to be. Now I actually cut this on the wrong side of the 13. It needed to be in front of that yellow line, so I don't show it in the video, but I do end up recutting this. Luckily it was too big, I could cut it smaller. If it was too small, I could, probably would have been out of luck. So then with those angles, I could then use a skill saw and cut them. So these are pretty, pretty important because they have to sit flush against the wall. Um, if these are off, your, your ladder will be unstable and luckily with this skill saw I could get a nice clean cut and then clean it up with a hand plane. So the one up top is going to be a pretty pretty steep steep angle because 13 inches off the wall is not, not a ton. You can see now that it sits flush on the ground and then flush against the wall and that's what I was looking for. So then I once I had one I could transfer those angles onto the other one and then cut that one as well. So to add my shelves, I want to put dados in. It will just make a, a sturdier piece. So the shelves need to be at the same angle as the foot. If they're not at the same angle as the foot, they won't be um, parallel to the floor. So these had specific marks. The first shelf was going to be about 36 inches up and then about 11 inches every other shelf. So I could take my angle mark 36. And once I finally get it going the right way, because it was hitting the wall, 
then I can mark a straight line and the shelves are about an inch thick. So I would mark an inch and then another 11 inches and then I would work my way up the piece to get my three shelves. So there I am marking for, for the inch and then I'll mark for the top. And I did this on both. So right now I'm marking the inside edge of my boards. I picked out the sides I wanted to face in versus out. So these are the two inside edges I'm marking. So you can see that's what they look like. The exact same thing on the other side. And then I transfer these lines to the front to make sure they aligned with each other. So this is the piece I'm using for the shelves. The customer had this, it was an older piece of furniture that I believe they were getting rid of and wanted to use it for the shelves. It's some sort of oak tabletop. So I was able to rip this down to size. And the depths of the shelves was based on what the customer wanted. The top one I believe was five and then it was about six and a quarter. And then the bottom one was around, around eight inches deep. So I could just rip this into pieces. And then I had enough left over to add the ledge on the back side of the table. So it worked out nicely. And then I have to match the coating on this, which is just a clear coat poly. So that was pretty easy, a water-based clear coat poly. So now I'm gonna cut the dados. And because these are at an angle, it was easiest to just do it with a skill saw. So on those marks, I cut to the inside of the line and the inside of the line on the other edge. And then I could just remove all the material in the center with some thin curves and then coming back through with a chisel. You'll see that I don't ride the line with the saw. I clean it up with a chisel as well. So I get a nice tight fit. So this was pretty easy work. These are long boards. So setting this up on my table saw would have been more work than it was worth. It was simple to just go through with, with um, a skill saw and cut those. So you could see how I cheated. I didn't cut right on the line. If I was using my table saw, I usually cut right on the line because I could get a nice clean cut. But then I could just go through with a chisel because I scored my lines before I made these cuts and just clean up that edge. So I'll have the board laying next to me and I could just test fit, test fit, test fit that in, in the groove. Once it's a nice tight fit, I'll move on to the next one. So that is what that is going to look like. See, it's, it's pretty flush. I still have to clean up the bottom a little bit so there was a slight gap. Then once I have those grooves, I could finally cut the, the length of my, my shelves because the inside had to be 25 inches. So once I had the inside set at 25 inches with the, the depth of those dados, I knew exactly how wide to cut my boards. So I could just set uh, make some marks on them, go to the radial arm saw, and, and cut these all down to size. One of the reasons the measurements were so strict on this was because there is a um, an HVAC unit in this is going in a bathroom. So it had to clear the HVAC in order to fit. So then the shelves have to be flush against the back wall. So this was kind of a pain in my shop because I don't have any flat level surfaces, but I managed to kind of prop this up against my wall get the shelves in place, and then I used a pencil to mark where they aligned so that um, I had that as a reference and I could transfer the depth of those marks onto the other side. So I don't sh show filming this, but I like if that mark was say three inches off the back wall, I could transfer it to the other edge of the panel so I could get my data lined up perfectly and then dry fit it together. Now I test this on a wall in an actual house before um, I glued it together to make sure that my marks were right and it was perfect. The, the back pant side of those shelves is flush against the wall. So I'm going to be attaching these with, these with dowels, but I'm going to be using screws at first when I glue it together so I don't have to use clamps. So I'm just pre-drilling some holes. I go through one side to make sure they're centered um, in those dados and then I can flip it over and count, use a countersink bit to get an, um, to get them flush. So you could see my glue bottle kind of fell apart during this and I forgot to film, but essentially the way I dry fit it is exactly the way it glues together. You just put some glue in those grooves and then um, put some screws in them to clamp it all together. So to build the backers, these were just ledges in the back. So to have a nice little bit of a cleaner look, I ripped them down to about an inch and a half and then I just ran this up against the panel and I made a mark. I used a bevel gauge to uh, mirror that mark and then I could use it on my on my table saw, my miter gauge to get the, the right angle 
cut for my saw. So once I had that, you can see I can just rip these down. And then the exact same angle is on the long piece. So to cut the other one, I just had to cut the other one straight down to size. You can see that fits in there nicely. Now this material was too thick, so I wanted it flush on the inside edge of the ledge, so I had to go through and rip these, rip these trapezoids down. And then I'm left with a nice flush piece. Now this two sides are already glued into place, and then um, I'm gluing this back piece into place as well. I just let these set there. These pieces aren't structural. Um, once it's against the wall especially, I'm not super concerned they're going to fall off. I don't show this in the video, but after everything was dry, I went through the underside and sunk some screws into the bottom so it won't actually move. You can see how those angles create a nice back portion. Um, end grain and stuff I wasn't also concerned about because like I said this will be back against the wall so the top one was flush I didn't have to cut an angle because that's where it's straight in the back and the middle shelf I did the exact same process but the piece I'm left with was much smaller so at this point I could go through and add the dowels I took the screws out and add the dowels these are 3 8 inch dowels just going through also oak so the entire piece matches and this just makes it extremely strong the dados will, will sure everything up but the dowels will ensure that nothing will ever uh, pop apart and then like I said this is a water-based poly so this is officially the second project I'm using the spray gun on I really like it um, the poly's nice, you don't have to do anything to it. It sprays out of the gun without having to, to thin it or anything. And I put about three coats on here. Shelves already had poly on them, so they didn't need a ton. It's very easy to get on there. And then that is what it looks like.